please stand. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. May the grace and peace of God our Father, the Lord Jesus Christ, and the Holy Spirit be with you all. (laughs) Courtney and Ben are in love, and they love each other so much that they have decided to spend the rest of their lives together. They've invited us here this afternoon to witness their marriage and to participate in this covenant of love which they are to form. Let us put ourselves in the presence of God and pray for their happiness. O God, who in creating the human race willed that man and wife should be one, join, we pray, in a bond of inseparable love, that these your servants who are to be united in the covenant of marriage so that as you make their love fruitful, they may become by your grace witnesses to charity itself. We ask this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Please be seated. A reading from the book of Genesis. The Lord God said, It is not good for man to be alone. I will make a suitable partner for him. So the Lord formed out of the ground various wild animals and various birds of the air. And he brought them to the man to see what he would call them. And whatever the man called each of them would be its name. The man gave name to all the cattle, all the birds of the air, all the wild animals, but none proved to be a suitable partner for the man. So the Lord God cast a deep sleep on the man, and while he was asleep, he took out one of his ribs and closed up in its place with flesh. The Lord God then built up into a woman the rib that he had taken from the man. When he brought her to the man, the man said, This one, at last, is bone of my bones and flesh of my flesh. This one shall be called woman, And for out of her man, this one has been taken. That is why a man leaves his father and mother and clings to his wife. And the two of them become one body. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, strive eagerly for the greatest spiritual gifts. But I shall show you a still more excellent way. If I speak in human and angelic tongues, but do not have love, I am a resounding gong or a clashing cymbal. And I have a gift of prophecy (coughs) and comprehend all mysteries and all knowledge. If I have all faith so as to move mountains, but do not have love, I am nothing. If I give away everything I own, and if I hand my body over so that I may boast, but do not have love, I gain nothing. Love is patient, love is kind. 
It is not jealous. It is not pompous. It is not inflated. It is not rude. It does not seek its own interests. It is not quick tempered. It does not brood over injury. It does not rejoice over wrongdoing, but rejoices with truth. It bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, endures all things. Love never fails. The word of the Lord. The Lord be with you. The reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. When Jesus saw the crowds, he went up the mountain, and after he sat down, his disciples came to him, and he began to teach them, saying, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are they who mourn, for they will be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they will inherit the land. Blessed are they who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be satisfied. Blessed are the merciful, for they will be shown mercy. Blessed are the clean of heart, for they will see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called children of God. Blessed are they who are persecuted for the sake of righteousness, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are you when they insult you and persecute you and utter every kind of evil against you falsely because of me. Rejoice and be glad, for your reward will be great in heaven. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord Jesus, Lord Jesus Christ. Please be seated. Ben and Courtney were planning their wedding ceremony. Uh, they very much wanted their guests, their family, and their friends to feel like they were actively participating in the ceremony rather than just being spectators. So with that in mind, I'd ask you to stand, please have a couple to stand. All right. Would all of Courtney's family please stand? Courtney's family, I ask you to show your love for this young woman and support her at this important moment in her life. Please listen carefully to the question I'm about to ask you all. If you are so moved, respond with a heartfelt, we do, to the question, indicating your love and approval. The question is, who gives this woman to be married? Please remain standing. Would all of Ben's family please stand? Ben's family, I ask you to show your love for this young man and support him at this important moment in his life. Please listen carefully to the question I'm about to ask you all. If you are so moved, respond with a heartfelt, we do to the question, indicating your love and approval. The question, who gives this man to be married? We do. Please remain standing. Friends of the bride and groom, that's everybody else. <laughs> Please stand. <laughs> Dear friends of Courtney and Ben, I will now ask you all a question. If you are so moved, please, res please respond with a heartfelt, we will, to the question. The marriage of Courtney and Ben creates a new family and a new relationship with each one of you. Will you give them your blessing, pray for them, and support them with the love they will need in their married life together? Amen. Courtney and Ben, know that you have the love and support of your family and friends as you begin your journey of life as husband and wife. Please be seated. Ever since I got here yesterday, everybody's been telling me to hydrate, so.
Well, Courtney and Ben, after a, what, a year of planning, the big day has come, your wedding. And I suspect when you got your Colorado wedding license, they told you that um, there's a mandatory test in the state of Colorado for everybody who's going to be married. And it's just a formality. So it's a little test you have to pass. So I'm going to ask you a few questions. And it's, you have to get the majority right, but don't worry about it, because last night, uh, Ben's mom, Eileen, made up that little quiz for us, which we <laughs> had at the rehearsal dinner, which is a good prep for this. So, so don't be nervous. You can answer the questions together. All right? But this is required by the state. It's just a formality. All right, okay. So, most of, first question, most of our customs come from what people, what culture, what ancient group? Of course, we're talking about the... Your answer would be? Christians. The Christians, no. Uh, <laughs> the Romans, the Romans. Ah, yeah, of course, of course. All right, so second question. Second question is, what was the original color of the wedding dress for the Romans? Red, very good, round of applause. Thank you, thank you, very good, very good. All right, very good. So, pay attention, Ben, okay. The first white wedding dress was worn by blank, who, who set the style for white wedding dresses? No, it's not, no, it's not. What, what's your answer? Courtney, you're not going to save them on this one? Okay, Queen Victoria. Queen Victoria. Ah, okay. These items represent, in, in the Roman world, the dowry. You know what a dowry is, right? Okay, the dowry uh, of the couple or of the bride. And, and it's something you're going to exchange with each other. What would that be? Very good, the rings, very good, okay. Wonderful, you're doing, you're doing fine, you're gonna pass this, not to worry. Um, the custom of carrying the bride over the threshold, you've heard of this, okay, where did that come from? It has to do with the Romans. The Roman, yes, but. <laughs> do you know where the custom came from? Okay, well, and I'm not making this up, this is for real. Uh, the Romans used to go to neighboring tribes when they were a smaller little country. They'd go to neighboring tribes and kidnap their brides from other tribes. And that's the, kid, that's the kidnapping piece, carrying the bride over the threshold. All right, I'm sorry I brought that one up. All right. Um, the last one. Are either of you Irish descent? Oh, good, then you should know this. All right. The term honeymoon comes from what? I'll hydrate while you're thinking. <laughs> well, no answer? Okay, well, leave it to the good old Irish. For one month after the bride and groom were married, every night before they went to bed, they had a little drink of mead. You know what mead is? Mead's the liqueur made from honey, all right? And uh, one month, so honey, moon, one Moon, okay, one month, okay. Honey from the mead, okay. And that was a fertility ritual. That was to bring children. Ah, ah, okay. <laughs> well, fortunately you passed. We can go ahead with the, the wedding. I'm very grateful for that, very grateful. Courtney and Ben, you invited us to this beautiful church. And I have to tell you, a beautiful place in our country, Estes Park. Boy, it beats Illinois all to heck, you know. <laughs> it's a beautiful part of the country. And we are so honored, your family, your friends, we are so honored to be able to join you on this important day in your lives. You know, not every couple these days decides to have their wedding in church, and, and I think that's very sad. You decided to have your marriage blessed by the church in, in this beautiful chapel for several reasons. 
First reason, you are thankful to God and you came here to give thanks for the gift of each other. You've come to the conclusion that God brought you two together and intended you since you were born for one another. Your love is a gift from God which reflects his love for each one of us. And so you are here in a spirit of heartfelt gratitude. You've also come here to ask God to bless your married life together, allowing your love to grow and deepen and the mystery of that love to deepen each day. You're asking God to bless your home and one day your children, to help you face the challenges that life will put before you. As Scripture tells us, with Christ at my side, I can do all things. With that in mind, Ben, and this is more of a serious question rather than the one, the test at the beginning. Ben, what is your most important responsibility as a husband? Now, I'm not talking about providing for your family financially, that sort of thing. What is your most important responsibility as a husband? This is the first guy to get it right. My goodness. <laughs> wonderful. Wonderful. Holy cow, Ben. I should have known. Courtney, what is your primary responsibility as Ben's wife? Get Ben into heaven. Get Ben into heaven. And one day the two of you get your children into heaven. And that's why we are in this sacred place to recognize that fact and to ask God's help. We're also here because you believe that your vows are sacred, that they are holy, and that a church is the only appropriate place to exchange them. You're especially asking God for the strength and courage to live out your vows to one another. In just a few minutes, we will listen as you two exchange your vows using the most beautiful words ever written or ever spoken. I, Ben, take you, Courtney, to be my wife. I, Courtney, take you, Ben, to be my husband. Beautiful words, powerful words, sacred words. In exchanging your sacred vows, you become husband and wife. And in doing so, you create your covenant of love. Now, in our culture, we're, used, we're not used to covenant and the idea of covenant. We're used to contracts, right? We're a contractual society. Um, a contract oftentimes is drawn up by a lawyer. It calls for the exchange of goods, services, property, money. It might be written down, kept in a safety deposit box, and we also know that they're easily broken. But your marriage, what you do here today, is not a contract. It's a covenant. A covenant is not written on paper. It's written on the heart. It doesn't call for the exchange of goods and services and property or money. It calls for the exchange of fidelity and love. It's not guaranteed by the law. It's guaranteed by God. And in our way of thinking, it's not easily broken, but lasts into eternity. At this point in the ceremony, the priest is supposed to give the young couple some advice on married life, which always strikes me as kind of funny because I'm a celibate. I don't know anything about married life. Okay. But what I could suggest to you both, or the advice I would give, is continue what you begin here today. Worship together every Sunday. Pray together daily. Become involved in your parish. Find other people of faith to share your lives and form that Christian community. Raise your children in faith. Every night kneel down with them next to their bed and share mommy's and daddy's faith with them as you pray together. And let everyone who visits your home know that two Christians live there by the kindness and charity with which you receive them. Keep Christ at the center of your marriage. Then your lives will be filled with peace and joy, and you can face any challenge that comes your way. The last thing I want you to know, Courtney and Ben, before you exchange your vows, 
is that you do not take your vows alone. We, your family and friends, will take those vows silently with you. Because all of us, we promise to be true to you both in good times and in bad, in sickness and in health. We will love and honor you both all the days of our lives. Ben and Courtney will now exchange their vows, becoming husband and wife. Okay. To the front. Stay on the top step, okay? Dearly beloved, you have come together into the house of the church so that in the presence of the church's ministers and the community, your intention to enter into marriage may be strengthened by the Lord with a sacred seal. Christ abundantly blesses the love that binds you. Through a special sacrament, he enriches and strengthens those he has already consecrated by holy baptism so that they may be faithful to each other forever and assume all the responsibilities of married life. And so in the presence of the church, in the presence of your family and friends, in the presence of God, I ask you now to state your intentions. Ben and Courtney, have you come here to enter into marriage without coercion, freely and wholeheartedly? Yeah. Are you prepared as you follow the path of marriage to love and honor each other for as long as you both shall live? I am. I am. Are you prepared to accept children lovingly from God and to bring them up according to the law of Christ and his church? I am. I am. Since it is your intention to enter into the covenant of holy matrimony, declare your consent now before God and his church. Ben, please repeat after me. I, Ben, take you, Courtney, to be my wife. I, Ben, take you, Courtney, to be my wife. I promise to be faithful to you. I promise to be faithful to you. In good times and in bad. In good times and in bad. In sickness and in health. In sickness and in health. To love you and to honor you. To love you and to honor you. All the days of my life. All the days of my life. Courtney, please repeat after me. I, Courtney, take you, Ben, to be my husband. I, Courtney, take you, Ben, to be my husband. I promise to be faithful to you. I promise to be faithful to you. In good times and in bad. In good times <clears throat> and in bad. In sickness and in health. In sickness and in health. To love you and to honor you. To love you and to honor you. All the days of my life. All the days of my life. May the Lord in his kindness strengthen the consent you have declared before the church and graciously bring to fulfillment his blessing within you. What God joins together, let no man put asunder. The rings. Bless and sanctify your servants in their love, O Lord, and let these rings, a sign of their faithfulness, remind them of their love for one another we ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Please hand Courtney's ring to Ben. Ben, slip the ring on Courtney's finger. Repeat after me. Courtney, receive this ring. Courtney, receive this ring. As a sign of my love and fidelity. As a sign of my love and fidelity. In the name of the Father. In the name of the Father. And of the Son. And of the Son. And of the Holy Spirit. And of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Please give Ben's ring to Courtney. Courtney, slip the ring on his finger and repeat after me. Ben, receive this ring. Ben, receive this ring. As a sign of my love and fidelity. As a sign of my love and fidelity. In the name of the Father. In the name of the Father. And of the Son. And of the Son. And of the Holy Spirit. And of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Ben and Courtney, may these rings every day that you wear them remind you of this moment and the sacred covenant to which you have entered. Ben, would you like to kiss the bride? Yes. Okay. So you can go back to your.
your seats. We're going to go stand at your chair, please. Okay. Please stand. Let us now offer our prayers of petition to a loving and merciful God. We pray that the love of Courtney and Ben may grow deeper each day and may the love strengthen and comfort them on their journey through life together. We praise the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. prayer. We pray for Courtney and Ben that their life together will be filled with happiness and love, that they may always be true friends to each other, that together they will face the challenges of life. May their home be one filled with love. Bless them on their journey through life. We praise the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for the parents of Courtney and Ben, their sisters and brothers, and their extended families gathered here today. We give thanks for their constant love and support. We praise the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all friends here present, young and old, married and single, that they be blessed with health and peace. We praise the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. As we gather to celebrate this joyful day, we remember the faithful departed whom we have loved. May they watch over us today and enjoy the us in love. We praise the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the gifts of life and good health which we so often take for granted, may we always appreciate these gifts and may they bring us closer to God. We praise the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. We pray for the private intentions of all here present that God may grant you and your loved ones your requests and guide you happily through life. We praise the Lord. Lord, Lord Heavenly Father, source of all blessings, we, your sons and daughters, have put before you our prayers of need. We ask you to answer them in the name of Jesus, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated. Our gifts of bread and wine will be brought forward by Ben and Courtney's mother. Our offertory hymn is number 
pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Please stand. Receive, we pray, O Lord, the offering made on the occasion of this sealing of the sacred bond of marriage. And just as your goodness is its origin, may your providence guide its course through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God. For in Christ you have made a new covenant with your people, so that as you have redeemed man and woman by the mystery of Christ's death and resurrection, so in Christ you might make them partakers of divine nature and joint heirs with him of heavenly glory. In the union of husband and wife, you give a sign of Christ's loving gift of grace, so that the sacraments we celebrate may draw, might draw us back more deeply into the wondrous design of your love. And so with the angels and all the saints, we praise you, and without end, we acclaim. you either to kneel or to sit. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fountain of all holiness. Be holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples saying, take this all of you and eat of it, for this is my body which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis our Pope, David our Bishop, and all the clergy. 
Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life, and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. stand. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the, the kingdom, kingdom, the power, and the, and the glory, glory are yours, now, now and forever. forever. Holy Mother Church now imparts a special blessing upon the bride and groom called the nuptial blessing. If you would go to floor level and face the altar. <clears throat> Brothers and sisters, let us pray to the Lord for the bride and groom who come to the altar as they begin their married life together, that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, they may always be bound together by love for one another. <clears throat> Holy Father, maker of the whole world who created man and woman in your own image and willed that their union be crowned with your blessing, we humbly beseech you for these your servants who are joined today in the sacrament of matrimony. May your abundant blessing, Lord, come down upon this bride, Courtney, and upon Ben, her companion for life. And may the power of your Holy Spirit set their hearts aflame from on high, so that living out together the gift of matrimony, they may adorn their family with children and enrich the church. In happiness, may they praise you, O Lord. In sorrow, may they seek you out. May they have the joy of your presence to assist them in their toil and know that you are near to comfort them in their need. Let them pray to you in the holy assembly and bear witness to you in the world and after a happy old age, together with the circle of friends that surrounds them, may they come to the kingdom of heaven through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other a sign of peace. Peace be with you, then. Peace be with you. Peace be with you, Mrs. Canute. I'm the first one to call you Mrs. Canute. <laughs> no, didn't you go to Courtney's it. family first mm -hmm. and then to your family. Okay. And you come back to your chairs when you're finished. Okay. <clears throat> Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. 
Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. Let us pray. Having been made partakers at your table, we pray, O Lord, that those who are united by the sacrament of marriage may always hold fast to you and proclaim your name to the world through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Ben and Courtney have asked me to announce that they would like for their families to please stay behind after the ceremony for pictures. They invite the rest of their guests to join them at 4 p.m. at the Della Terra Mountain Chateau, and a shuttle will be available for all those staying at the Ridgeline Hotel beginning at 3 p.m. to the reception, which begins at 4. If you'd like to step to the floor level, face the altar. I'd like you to respond, please, with a heartfelt amen to the blessings of, that closes our ceremony. May God, the Eternal Father, keep you one of heart in love for one another, that the peace of Christ may dwell in you and abide always in your home. Amen. amen. May you be blessed in your children, have solace in your friends, and enjoy true peace with everyone. Amen. amen. May you be witnesses in the world to God's charity so that the afflicted and needy who have known your kindness may one day receive you thankfully into the eternal dwelling of God. Amen. Amen. And may Almighty God bless you all, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. And now it is truly my personal honor to introduce to you for the first time anywhere Mr. and Mrs. Ben and Courtney Canute. Yeah.